like the devil came and favored that copper scar. You and I, you and I, out there alone like the world was our own under that copper then we kissed and I held you in my arms and the world stood still. I loved you, oh, how I loved you, and I always will till I die. Till I die, I'll remember my love when I look above and I see a copper sky. I don't know who he is, but he killed one of the few Apaches we made friends with. They'll hit us with everything they've got. No, they won't. Not if we show them it wasn't one of us. Not if we get rid of the man who did it. You're crazy. All of you. Right there. Hang him from there. If the Apaches come in, he'll be the first thing they see. They'll know we paid the killer in full. That's yes, right. Sir. Hang him. Just a minute. Got a right to a trial. A real quick trial. Apaches are holding court, standing on ceremony. Come on, Pat Sentence, he did it. Anyone here thinks he didn't? What do we do? Thank him for what he's done? We've said it. We count him guilty, let him hang. Paxson Williams. It's Hack. What? Just Hack. Easier than Hackson. Hack Williams. Hackson or Hack. You heard the jury. They've decided you're guilty. If you've got anything to say, you better stand up and say it now. If not, I'm going to pass sentence. You got any words? Yeah, I got words, but you don't want to hear them. I keep telling you I had nothing to do with that killing. 
But you want somebody to hang. And it don't look like any words of mine will be changing your minds. You were seen standing over him. There was a freshly discharged shell from your rifle. He was killed by a rifle. That's proof enough, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This court finds you guilty of murder. About time. Constable, the court orders you to keep the prisoner in jail until sunup when he hangs. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. Take him away. This way. All right, William's inside. Hanging. First thing in the morning. You stay the night, Pokey. If anything happens, I'll hold you responsible, understand? Yeah, I understand. this job as jailkeeper for long, but I seem to recollect here in some place that a hanging man gets something sort of special. What you got for me? A key? No, no, no. I don't have no key, but I figure you get some sort of a choice. Choice of what? Well, supper. You get to have anything you want for your last supper. You really want to give me a choice? Yes, sir. I'd be happy to. Get me a bottle. For supper? I'll drink my supper. I don't know if that's legal. I've been wondering what is legal ever since I hit this town. Yeah. I bet you have. You better get in. Well, I'm the keeper here, and you get your choice. You know what? I'm going to give you some of what Constable Trumbull drinks. He keeps it right here. Right here. In a safe place. Right good, Miss Williams. Right good. Wish I could join you. But I better not. Well, at least you die happy.
here's your small growing town. I still say, ma'am, if I was you, I'd have stayed on that stagecoach till it made a complete round trip. You wouldn't be trying to frighten me, would you? Ma'am? Oh, come now, Mr. Martin. Aren't all of you men of the West a little prone to boasting about your struggles in uncivilized territories? A little proud over your victories in Indian warfare? Well, I ain't talking about that. I mean, you're wasting your time coming out here. Well, there ain't nothing to teach because there's hardly enough youngins to make it worthwhile. Well, Mr. Oliver Lawson assured me that the need for education in your town was imperative. Ma'am, there ain't more than one or two youngins. One or a hundred, it makes no difference, Mr. Martin. The arm of learning must reach out to all the wilderness of our country. I still say go back to Boston. Not when there are small towns growing up. Not when there is the need for those who can teach. Hey, Kit! Good Lord, Mr. Martin. Like I said, Ames, you should have stayed on that stagecoach. No use. No use at all. Gonna hang me, are you? <laughs> the lock be in to kill me, but it saved me. Red sticks could shoot in. They kill poor little pokey. They couldn't even see me. <laughs> you think that's not funny?
I beg your pardon. Stand on ceremony. Help yourself. I, I don't mean to disturb you. Take yourself a swallow. Not the best stuff, but it's whiskey. Thank you, but I don't care for any. Good for what ailed you. Makes everything hazy. That's the way I like it. Worries, problems. What are we going to do, Mr. Martin? Name's Williams, Hack Williams. Oh, I I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. But the town, the, the people here, out there. They're dead. I know. It's horrible. Isn't it just? Oh, Mr. Martin, in the name of heaven. The name is Williams. Hack Williams. Oh, Martin or Williams. Something has to be done. It's been done. That bothers you, doesn't it? But it doesn't bother me. There was no one of them that didn't want to see me hang. Hang. For something I didn't do. <laughs> oh, they had proof. Mr. Williams, I know nothing of what you've been talking about, nor does it matter at this time. The important thing is that you and I have found ourselves in the midst of a disaster. And something has to be done. What? What are we going to do? We, lady? We, Mr. Williams. Most certainly something has to be done. Yeah. What, Mr. Williams? What? Your intentions. A quick departure, lady. Back to the stage station? The other way. Oh, uh, but you'll be kind enough to escort me back there, won't you? No, sir. I can't go back there alone. No, not if you want to live. That station will be filled with red sticks just waiting for the first stagecoach to come along. There's a small settlement, one, two days' drive from here. I'll take you that far, lady. Then you're on your own. Well, come on, get busy. We need food, water, blankets. Well, get on. Well, what are you going to do? Wait and see what you're going to do. What about the dead, Mr. Williams? You want to be around when the Red Sticks come back to bury their dead? Well? Sir? Food, water. Mr. Martin carried a supply of bacon, hard and coffee. And if you'll notice, the canteen. I can't help but feel I'm a burden to you. I'm sorry for that. You spoke of leaving quickly. Shall we do just that?
staff of life, lady. The real staff of life. Williams. How is it someone like you would come out to a country like this, lady? You can stop calling me lady. Aren't you one? You may call me Miss Hayes. And as for my presence in this country, I left a home and position to take my place as an educator in the far west. Where you come from, is everybody like you? You mean Boston? Figures. I take it you're averse to manners and gentleness, Mr. Williams. I'm not adverse to nothing, ain't it? You must be. You dislike me and you show it. Ma'am. It's bad manners to show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you know it. I don't know anything but cavalry, lady. Cavalry, ten years worth. You appear to be quite out of uniform. And quite out of the cavalry. I did what I was supposed to do. My hitch ran out. I said my goodbyes. No one shirks his duty without a reason. Were you, uh, dismissed from the cavalry? I wasn't dismissed. I quit when we hit was up. Because of your drinking? Ma'am, you ever hear cowardice? Of course. A man who proves himself to be a coward is accused of cowardice. It's a descriptive noun. It's a what? I don't have to go into subject and predicate with you, do I, Mr. Williams? No, I guess not. What were you going to say about cowardice? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I would say you know a great deal about nothing, Mr. Williams. Just that it's hard to kill a human being, and if you do, and it makes you a little sick, not anxious to do it again. They put that word down against you. Oh, it's not really in writing. Why you keep on killing? I guess you don't know what I mean. I guess I don't know myself. I think we both know what you mean, Mr. Williams. Is that what started you drinking? Uh, tell me, what was your trouble with the townspeople? That wasn't trouble. That was close to murder. Did you murder somebody? Drinking means trouble, doesn't it, Mr. Williams? You... Lady, Miss Haynes, you better keep your teaching nose to yourself, because if you don't keep your teaching nose to yourself, I'm just liable to let you off right here. Now, you might find yourself in a little bit of trouble. Oh. You're not serious, Mr. Williams. 
You see it, don't you? I mean about leaving me behind. Travel on? We need a fire for bacon and coffee, and a fire at night is a sure invitation for any red sticks. Get him! Cooking, lady. You said you came out here to educate the West. In what, lady? If you want a hot meal, Mr. Williams, you'll have to prepare it for us. I'm not schooled in cooking under these conditions. You'll have to accept that. Don't you dare say it, Mr. Williams. I heard you before. Heard me what? Take the Lord's name in vain. Commissioned officer in the cavalry. I made sergeant once, but they broke me. For drinking. Oh. Well, I'm sure that sergeants know how to be gentlemen, don't they? Speak your mind, lady. Say it. Well, I, uh, feel quite uncomfortable, uh, Dusty and dirty, what with all this travel. I should like to refresh myself with a dip in that river. Well, as far as you like. Only when the desert air gets cold at night, no fire. Oh, well, that's not important. But something else is. What? Can I trust you? To what? To stay here. You can trust me. On your one-time sergeant's honor? 
On my one time, Sergeant's honor. Thank you, Mr. Williams. There's a bird, lady. Didn't sound like a bird. All right, then it's a red stick in a patch, you know. Go to sleep. I'm frightened, Mr. Williams. And I'm cold. <laughs> Mr. Williams. Could I trust you if I moved a little closer to you, only for a little more warmth and safety? I'm ahead. Can I trust you? You can trust me. One time, Sergeant Honor. One time, Sergeant Sonner.
have I said the wrong thing, or are you uncivil in the morning? Sit down. Alcohol does that, doesn't it, Mr. Williams? It strips mankind of his every vesture. Shows him as he really is, doesn't it? Oh, I've seen it happen before. Well, you're not the first one. Oh, no. There are many like you. But none like you. No, sir, there ain't nothing like you. I don't feel very hungry. All right. Get your bed rolled up and stow it. Stop now, might kill both of us. Just don't say nothing, lady. Nothing. It's the only help I can offer. A gun's the best prayer I've been taught. You just pray for yourself. I'll pray for both of us. No. Just yourself, lady. Just yourself. <laughs> just yourself. Ah! Why do you dislike me? Is it because I offer a threat to our safety? Tell me, what would you do differently if I weren't with you? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry we can't get along, Mr. Williams. But then it is difficult, isn't it? Under adverse circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so much the fact that we're caught up in an Indian war, but because we're from different worlds. Mm -hmm. I've tried, haven't I? I've been a lady, but because of your drinking, you haven't seen fit to treat me as a woman. Have you? What? Treated me as a woman. 
Why? Well, maybe it's because... Because you're not a woman. You're a lady. I'm a lady because I'm helpful. Because I know good manners when I see them. I'm genteel because I come from Boston. And I'm not a woman because I, I can't cook on dirty sand. Because... Because I don't offer myself to you. No, no, no! It's because you prattle on and on and on, lady. Because you stick your teacher nose where it's not wanted. Because... Because you're just like a greenhorn first lieutenant fresh out of West Point. Short on experience and full of theory. That's quite enough, Mr. Williams. <laughs> I blame your drinking for your terrible conduct. Yeah. I shall be very happy when we reach the settlement. Me too, lady. We will be rid of one another. Yeah. I'll still say a prayer for you. Yeah, yeah. somewhere in the back, or, or perhaps in one of the other cabins. I hope they don't mind what we just walked in. They don't mind. Of course, they're home, Mr. Williams. Uh, there, there's warm food on the stove. The, the, the table's set for four people. They don't mind at all, lady. They're not dead. 
the stove warm, or the table set. Oh, they must be somewhere around. Same thing in the other cabins. Won't be needing that. Well, it's half empty. The well's been poisoned. <laughs> uh, just thinking how good that whiskey would be right now. I hope you're going to say a prayer for them. Too many of them, lady. I'm short on prayers. It's the least you can do. The least I can do is get out of here. It doesn't take that long. No, it doesn't, lady. But if we stay here long enough, we might join them. Come on. blankets down. I, I put them down there. You could at least say thank you. You could say something. Anything, just say anything. I can't stand the silence. You haven't spoken at all, not since we left the settlement. You're angry at me because I threw away your whiskey. That's it, isn't it? That's why you're not talking to me, isn't it? All right, Mr. Williams. I apologize for throwing away your whiskey. Well, I've apologized. What more can I do? Oh, I know your kind. Oh, yes, Mr. Williams. A miserable part of the human race. Men, big men like you, who find their strength in alcohol. Men capable of destroying not only their careers, but their homes and their families. Bringing shame and disgrace to those who trust them. Making a sham of love and respect. Just keep talking, ladies. Speak your peace. Go on, say it. Don't think I won't. Don't think I don't know men like you. Oh, I've seen them. Have you? Yes, Mr. Williams. My father, my very own father, ruthless and cruel, godless like you, not caring for anyone or anything, just self, self, Mr. Williams. Now you shut your mouth. I've had just about enough out of you, ranting and raving, picking and chewing. I mean, I'd have all the so-called manners you like. And the more I think about it, the less I'd like to have them if it makes people turn out the likes of you!
he's still alive. Not for long. Stay away from him. Not too What? He's saying, white lady, help me. Not too clear. Accept my apology for the way I spoke to you. Well, we better get some sleep, Miss Haynes. After I take care of things. I think I'm a strange creature, Mr. Williams. How's that, Miss Haynes? Haven't I acted rather... Well... I, I certainly haven't been very helpful, have I? I can't rightly say, ma'am. Miss Haynes, please. Miss Haynes. I'll try and do better. Yes, ma'am. Last night, that... That Indian. I, I mean, it's been such a nightmare, all this killing. Not what I expected. Yes, ma'am. It all seemed so simple. Promised schoolroom, a home to stay in, children to teach. Mr. Williams. Don't worry too much. If we can find water, I'm sure we got a good chance to make it. Thank you. Thank you. Indians? Could 
be the wind. But it's Indians. I can't say. Yeah! Do you hear me? We can't stop. We gotta keep moving. Come on. I lived all my life alone. Never needed anyone. Never needed anything. Yes. Would it be all right if I prayed now? I mean, maybe if the both of us prayed, maybe it'd help. Oh, yes, it would help. It would help. Would you teach me? I don't even know how to start. Should I close my eyes? No, you don't have to. Just speak from your heart, Mr. Williams. Yes, ma'am. God, I want to ask you. I... Maybe we've been apart so long. Now it's hard to say, because I want something. I... God. Hear our prayer. Please give us strength to find our way out of this wilderness. Lead us with your love and your understanding. Accept our thanks for your goodness. And hear our humble prayer. Amen.
very wonderful that just happened to me, Mr. Woody. You're all right. I'm fine. And I'm very grateful. Yes. I'm very happy. Suppose it'd be right praying for whiskey now, would it? <laughs> it sure hurt to leave all that good water back there. What did I say? I'm convinced you'll find safety, Mr. Williams. I know our prayers have been answered. I know it. Look! Something's moving. I know it's help this time. Not Indians, but help, Mr. Williams. We'll find out soon enough. Come on. <laughs> Williams. Long way from home. So are you, Hadley. Still with the cavalry, though. Still fighting the war. You remember, don't you? Yeah. Very bad. Not as bad as the troll I was with. Some of them remember you, like me. Only I'm alive. They won't be for long. Forget all that. You're in trouble. So is the... So is the patrol. We saw signs. The lieutenant sent me on ahead to get help from the fort. Go on. I ran across a war party. I got away. The patrol won't make it. They'll ambush him. Ambush him. Near Thunder Canyon. Do the outfit of me. Warn. Warn. Warn the patrol. Somehow. We'll take his horse.
Look. What are you going to do? This won't be much use against the red sticks. It's for you. Don't. They'll never let you get to them. Just you keep out of sight. Still hurt? Uh. You're a remarkable soldier. That's what the Colonel called you. Oh, did he? You saved many lives, Mr. Williams. I didn't mean to. You meant to. May I say I'm very happy? I'm just happy you left Boston. But my name. Can you ever forgive me for what I've been? All the trouble I've caused you? Lady, please. Lady? I don't know your first name. Oh, it's Nora. Officer here. Yes, sir. Guess you were a little after my hitch. I've got a whole cavalry patrol that's grateful to you. I had no choice. You had a choice. When I get a reply to the dispatch that I sent to Washington, you'll find that we're not the only grateful ones. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.